All right, so Saints football may be back. New Orleans up to 4-4. Four and four. Got a big win last week against Indianapolis. And you look at the final score, you're like, oh, let's go. The offense finally did something. You know, it's like that uh, gif or that picture with the guy in the stick. He's like, do something, right? I mean, that's what we were all kind of waiting for as, as Saints fans and people that cover the team. You know, where's the offense that, you know, was being hyped up all season? Where's the Derek Carr deep shots, the prolific passing game? Where's Alvin Kamara with the nice downfield runs? Where's Chris Olave or Rashid Shahid with the deep catches? Oh, we finally saw. We finally saw where all that money's going to, and it's not going to a charity anymore. The question is, can we see more of that against the Bears this weekend going forward? Well, I think this offense really hinges on one thing, and we've talked about it a lot, I feel like, all fall. The offensive line. In this game against Indianapolis, the Saints offensive line allowed one sack. That's got to be like a season low because it feels like every game, Derek Carr is like he's in the ocean, and he's just fighting to keep his head above water, right? Like he's trying to stay alive in the pocket so he can let his receivers get open, let the plays develop, and actually move the football. I mean, to give you an example of how dire it is, I think against Houston a few weeks ago, we passed the ball 51 times. 51 passes. That's unheard of in an NFL game because the Saints have had to change the way they play offense. They've got to snap, boom, snap, but like get it out of his hands within three seconds. He doesn't have the time to sit in the pocket, let that deep post route come open, or let Michael Thomas get open on a comeback route, you know? But in this game, they did. Rashid Shahid had a bunch of deep catches. Carr, again, only sacked once. A few other times, he kind of had to pull some magic out and make a throw with guy in his face or someone even wrapped around him about to sack him. But it was better. And if that's what you can consistently get from your offensive line, just a little bit more time, I think this offense could produce like this every week against, you know, defenses that aren't elite, but like average, maybe slightly above average, that don't have great, you know, pass rush units and are susceptible in some areas. So that's all you need, really. If you can have the upper hand in half of the games you have left this season, that's good because right now you're 4-4. Four and four. I think what you need to get to, the magic number, might be 10, 10 and 7 to make the playoffs, probably win the uh, NFC South because it's not looking too good. Like, you haven't played great football here in the first eight games, and even still, you're tied basically for the division lead with Atlanta at 4-4, four and four, and Tampa Bay's 3-4. and four. So to that point... This is the time right now that you got to turn it up. You got a chance here in these next four weeks, three games in four weeks with a bye week, to kind of take control of this division and pull away from the pack. As I said, you got the same record with Atlanta, and you'll play them soon. Here's what you got this upcoming stretch Bears this weekend. The Bears are terrible. I'll give you my prediction in a few seconds here. Uh, they're not good at all. Backup quarterback, Justin Fields, is out. They lost to the Chargers last week by 17, so it's not looking good. I, you're favored by 7.5. You should win this game, right? Then you got the Vikings on the road. Yep, on the road, but the Saints have played well on the road this year. And Minnesota, Kirk Cousins went down with the Achilles. He's out. They just signed Josh Dobbs, who's played okay at Arizona, but, you know, adjusting to a new team. It's what? He's going to get the game this week, and then if he plays, and then you're playing the Saints in two weeks think that you'd be favored in that one. Then you got your bye. Then you play Atlanta, a team that, you know, they've been all right, but they're not world beaters by any means, and it's a home game. So you've got a chance here with three winnable games to go from 4-4 four and four to 7-4 and four, and maybe get a game or two lead on the rest of the division heading into the second half of the season. So now's the time to turn it up and get going. One last thing on Derek Carr. I mentioned he threw it like 51 times against the Texans. He threw it half as many times, basically, against the Colts, 27. That's how many times he should be throwing the ball. What that means is that the big downfield plays, they're hitting. Rashid Shahid, he's connecting with him. Chris Olave, the same thing. Even Michael Thomas. It also means the run game's working because you're not having to, you know, pass it 70% of the time, run it 30%. So Alvin Kamara was efficient in this game. Taysom Hill had some big runs. Like, that guy's just a, a football weapon. So getting him more involved has worked out really well, too. So... As for my prediction for this weekend's game, the Bears are 2-6. and six. As I said, they got a backup quarterback in Tyson Badgent or whatever. He's ruined DJ Moore's fantasy breakout year, which I'm not too happy about. Uh, they struggle to score points. 
And if the offense plays as well as they did last week in this game, they'll be all right. I think they will give you a number and a stat here that's, I think, very important. The Bears are the worst pass rushing team in the NFL. They average one sack a game. So with an offensive line that hasn't been good, and last week showed that against a weaker defensive line, they can get protection. Well, we saw what happened. New Orleans put up 38 points. They moved the ball all afternoon. I think they do the same thing against the Bears. Carr's going to have time. He'll hit Shahid, Olave, Thomas, whoever. Taysom Hill will have some big plays, too. I think this offense is going to go off against the Bears. You get to 5-4, and four, and you got to turn it up at the Vikings. Bye against the Falcons. Four weeks from now, I hope we're talking about a 7-4 and four Saints team. You let me know what your prediction is. Be sure to like it, subscribe. Let's see what happens. See if this offense rolls.